one of the hardest parts about starting a concept art piece is starting it. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to figure out what you're going for and how you're going to organize the project. And there's nothing more intimidating than a blank piece of paper. So here's some ideas that I use regularly when I'm starting a new project and I need to get the ball rolling. Uh, first off, this is usually the main place that I start with, which is just a bunch of words. So, you know, Twitter length is great. Uh, but if you just have some ideas ready to go, um, just write them down and then uh, you know what to Google. So, you know, I was uh, playing with my kids and I was thinking about um, like a dragon layer, but for a baby dragon. And so I was trying to think through the ideas that come to mind for that. So stuff like caverns, treasure, magic. What do you think about when you think of dragons? Maybe some statues. Statue. Statue. Uh, when you think of babies, uh, this is something where you have like an element of uh, learning or gaining responsibilities as you grow, perhaps. So, you know, they would have toys perhaps around, but they would be like dragon sized toys, like, you know, uh, water barrels or something. Um, the dragon equivalent of playground equipment, uh, whether that's like roosts where you can jump from, uh, stuff like that. School stuff, nest stuff, eggs, hatcheries, um, you know, round baby corners, uh, soft pastels, maybe. And then, of course, there's the layer, and uh, that makes me think of stuff like caves, crystals, so on and so forth. So all these just are terms that then help you out with the next step, which is gathering reference. So there's no excuse to not use reference. If you can look something up, then go do it and use it. Uh, if you don't know how to draw a car, step one is look up how to draw or look up a picture of a car. So there's a couple of web resources that I would recommend for this. Uh, one is a uh, site called Reddit Grid where you can search by uh, special topics. And a lot of them are stuff like wildlife photography or like, you know, I could probably search cave and find some sort of subreddits uh, exploration. And suddenly you can find just different subreddits. I actually have this set as my homepage so that I can just regularly see this uh, collection of, uh, it's not actually porn, but it's like landscape porn or bird porn. And it just ends up being photos that might end up inspiring. So just any sort of referential thing is on this. Uh, there's also Pinterest where you can look up a bunch of stuff. There also is stuff like uh, specific artists. So you could look up somebody like uh, Philip Ehrlich or Derek Zabraki, all these cool guys. Um, and maybe they're like very specifically somebody that inspires your sense of dragons. And so one thing that is uh, going to speed this up is it's very slow to, you know, click on a picture of a dragon and right click and copy the image and paste it somewhere. So we want to gather all these images as fast as possible. So I actually use some plugins to speed this up. So, you know, to go back to something like, I don't know, cavern. Here you have a bunch of cool cavern pictures. Well, I don't want to download all these by right clicking and saving each one. So I'm going to speed up my workflow with something called uh, download images. There's also one called Twitter media download. So I'm not going to click this, but if I did, it would gather all of these things up into a zip file, such as these ones, and download them in mass. I can then see these as large icons, I can sort by details and sort by their actual file size so that I can make sure that I've got the ones that are good. And then I could start, you know, grabbing a bunch of these and start using them as concept art. So the next thing is uh, Twitter Media Downloader, which does something similar. Uh, this is uh, kind of a wacky plugin, but it allows you to take a Twitter account and if you click on media, a lot of times this is a great way to um, keep uh, good artists in mind because you should be looking at top quality work when you're trying to figure out how to make top quality work. And so if you are uh, surrounded by inspiring images by great artists uh, who are working in like Magic the Gathering and video games and stuff, it's going to help your own art improve and you're going to start seeing some of their tricks. You can also even, you know, uh, find a lot of like good ideas on Pinterest, for instance, like uh, perspective drawing. 
Now, some would argue Pinterest is already designed to be a board that you can organize this stuff and see it. But I actually prefer using a program called Pure Ref. Let me get Pure Ref up. There it is. So Pure Ref is a program you can go to pureref.com and get it. And it's a website that is really great for, or it's a, a program that's really great for just having all of your data organized at once. So just to show you a new one. Oops. I'm going to save this. And I'm going to create a new Pinterest board. I think I have to close it and open it. Yeah, so if I open a fresh one, uh, when you go to download it, it's going to ask you to donate, and that's a really helpful thing that you can do. But you can also just use custom account and no dollars. So when you have a blank PRF board like this, you can then select multiple images, such as this, and when you load it, it's going to dump all of these in there all at once. And it will auto-populate it. The other thing is that now I can go in and I can start clicking and moving these. Uh, middle mouse is your main navigation tool. You can uh, middle mouse in and out. Uh, you can scale the size of this window. And uh, the other thing that's cool is like um, you can hold left click to move it around and control alt left click to scale up. So maybe you find one thing. I'm actually going to open my old Pinterest board because I don't care about this new one. Don't save. So having gathered a bunch of images, and guess how I found those images? I just did you know, searches for those things that I talked about. Uh, I then suddenly have a lot of these really great pure F images. What if I want some of these more than others? I can click on it. I can scale it up. And I can then also do things like just arrange optimal. And it will images arrange optimal. And it'll uh change the layout around such that uh everything is now focused on my points of interest. So the ones that I scaled up are more able to focus. Sorry to be jumping around so much. So why PureRef over something else? Well, PureRef has a lot of really cool features because what if I need to start uh, working on these dragons and I want to see them? I can now change this to their mode. Uh, always on top. And now what happens is I can have my PureRef board open over here. Even if it's just a tiny window. Oh yeah. Too little too late, but here's Karnak. And I can zoom in and see stuff. And it'll stay on top of the window when I'm working in Photoshop. How cool is that? So we've got thumbnails. We've got a lot of reference now that I can start thinking, where would a dragon be here? I could add more stuff. Uh, I could add something. Uh, I could use some more references to perhaps ideas of angle that I'm going with, of colors that I'm going with, uh, more kid stuff like playground equipment to try and synthesize into this for, you know, stalagmite and crystal sleds or whatever. But this is looking pretty good so far. Now I can get to work in Photoshop. Now there's two ways that you can lay this out. Uh, I definitely have my preference. The first would be something like this, which is using artboards. And so you could use the artboard tool and select this and just keep adding them like that. And these are going to be thumbnails. Thumbnails are small drawings where you just, uh, as fast as possible, like 30 seconds to a minute, get the basic idea down. As soon as you can see the idea, move on. And I tend to go for like, um, you know, I shoot for 10. Sometimes I don't get there. But uh, here's why I don't like artboards is if I'm using the artboard selection tool, I'd have to do that. I have to hold shift and copy these. 
and copy and paste them. So I don't necessarily like moving them around. But each of them ends up being almost their own mini document. So one thing I don't like is, uh, maybe you like this, maybe you don't. Uh, you then have to jump between boards. So if I draw over here, I can't just draw, uh, go over here. I can hold Control and right click in Photoshop and that'll bring up any layer that's under here. And then I can see layer tool. There we are. And I can draw on it. Uh, I don't like doing that. I, th I think it's easier to have less UI that I have to mess with. Look at this horrible, horrible stack of layers. I don't want to look at that. So goodbye forever artboards. But they're good to know about. Uh, so instead, this is my preferred way to do this. And this was, I think, I, uh, just to walk through it again. I'm actually going to not always overlay this on top for now. So if I have a new document such as this, all right, such as, I think this is sort of large picture. I use view new guide layout and this is going to divide it into a number of columns and a number of rows. I can then set my gutter and on both to 80 pixels and my margins to 40 pixels and I'll have all these boxes. I can then start going around making that into a selection. So I'll select the marquee tool. I can select those. I'm now going to hold alt to deselect with the marquee tool. Boop. You got to use the sound effects or it doesn't work. Boop. Boop. All of this is with my mouse, by the way. I haven't actually used my tablet at all. Boop. So I've got this selection. There's a couple things I can do with that. I could uh, just create a new layer, set that as a layer mask, and now uh, anything that's inside of here will not work, uh, or will only show up where the layer mask is white. So I'm actually going to hit Control I to invert that now. And now this is my mat, and I can just change this color around to something lighter. And then when I draw over here, you'll notice that the boards are separated. I can also do a little bit of work in post to make these different colors. So I tend to like working on this. I actually like taking this a little bit further and I'll close this and show you how on my other document. Uh, that was uh, closest to this one. But a lot of times, here's what I hate about this, which is, so here I have the top level mat. Here I have my drawing layer, which is blank pixels plus uh, this. And I could start to draw on this. I'll get my tablet out. Oh, it's raining hard. So here's the problem with this. I'm drawing on this layer. Now what happens if I accidentally, at some point, grab the wrong color by color picking or what have you? The problem is that uh, if I'm selecting between black and dark gray, that will build up. So you don't end up knowing if this gray is because of opacity or if it's because of the actual pixel color. So I tend to uh, fix this with an overlay. Uh, I You can do this by uh, clicking here, effects, FX, color overlay. And when you add that, you end up with uh, a default color and so whatever is the actual pixels it will replace it with whatever color you choose so if I wanted this layer to be permanently green boop the benefit of this is now I can draw and it's always going to be green the other way that you can do this is sort of uh, a little better because this relies on the mat more to cover things up and I guess technically I don't even need because I have the mat, I actually don't need. Oops. There we go. I actually don't need the mask, but whatever. Who cares? So this is a different way to do it, and this is also what I'm doing on the mat layer. Uh, I had that selection, 
and I created a new layer that was set to solid color. And so that resulted in this being not pixels, it's just an RGB value that represents the whole thing. So if I double click that uh, swatch, it comes back up as something that I have to reset. Instead, uh, I sometimes prefer to work with that and use this as my drawing level. So instead of having pixels, I actually just have a giant fill set to that color. And instead, I'm actually going to make it darker because I can't see that. Oh, the layer's left. So I'll make that a nice dark, dark blue. How about? And now, instead, I'll actually draw on the mask. Whee! And so that way, everything will always be this uniform blue color because I'm not actually drawing pixels with RGB values. I'm drawing a mask that reveals a specific RGB value. By the way, these are mask hotkeys. You can hit Alt and click on the mask and then view it specifically. Uh, it's the same as viewing it only in the channel. <coughs> uh, you can also shift click on it, which will temporarily disable it. So we don't see anything when I do that because we have the boards up. And then control clicking on the mask is the same as control clicking on a layer. It'll select whatever the pixels are. Control D to deselect. So I guess we'll use this one. Oh, I want to draw on the mask. So you have to make sure you're on the correct thumbnail of these two. Boop. No, no, that silly color. So now I guess the next question is what brush do you use? I like to start with something that is pretty aggressive and the main goal here that I'm looking for in a thumbnails brush is that I don't mess around in the settings. I want to be able to trust it and just go directly into the next one. So there's a couple options for that. Uh, one is hard round and just using it on a very small setting like two or three. And the way that I would do something like that now I'm going to switch over here to my tablet. So I can start comping out some sort of, I don't know. Some sort of idea that I want to work on. Maybe it's something where... There's a waterfall coming down. By the way, this is a great time to start having Pure F open. Oh yeah, I love that. Another simple brush that um, you can start off with is uh, hard round pressure size, and this is a little better because you can get some effect out of it. And another thing that's great about <coughs> this uh, this um, mode-based setup is there's no RGB values. There's only the mask, right? It's either on or it's off, which means that a lot of times you can have your color set to default black and white with D, and then you can switch between them with black and white. So a lot of times, I'll switch back. So a lot of times I can end up being quite quite aggressive here. I'm gonna switch that back to always on top images canvas. There it is, always on top. And start taking some sort of inspiration from that. Maybe there's some sort of cavern entrance.
some sort of stream. Maybe some sort of waterfall. You can right click to move the whole thing. So I'm gonna move this about as far up as I can get it. So I would aim for at least 10 thumbnails. A lot of times it's great to set a goal of 10 thumbnails and then when you only get to uh, five, you know what? You got a lot more than you thought you would, but generally your first idea is gonna definitely be bad. Not definitely, but um, it's also something where it's like what movie cover at Blockbuster showing my age here what movie cover on netflix is so engaging that you consider clicking on it so right now <coughs> i am using the pen pressure and tr pushing lighter or uh, softer to make sure that it shows up and i'm just hitting x to switch between black although it's technically white, but in this sense, it's a mask and it's uh, um, set to yes, you know. You know what? Oh, I'm starting to feel done. Maybe this one's some sort of uh, thing where I'll start. I'll start with um, some sort of plain to understand it. But maybe this is like a, uh, an egg nursery center. So maybe there's lots of sort of dragon crates. And if I just, you know, I, I'm not setting up a perspective grid yet. <coughs> I'm trying to be about well, crazy. Uh, alternative to the previous layer attempt that I did, sometimes it's nice to set your brush really small. And then you can start taking on a bit more of a Uh, a bit more of a ballpoint pen squiggliness, uh, almost akin to what you might see in uh, T.S. Sullivan's work oh, this comes to mind. So maybe this has some sort of cool dragon thing here. And there's your dragon eggs. And they got some sort of Magic crystal I'm over here. I really like that crystal stuff. There's some sort of adult dragon here. Watching over them. Make the eggs look really small by by comparison. You know the idea is there. I can probably move on at this point, and I really should. But man, you know. Sometimes you get in the zone and you just want to spend a little more time on it than you should. Happens to us all. And then perhaps over here, some sort of repoussoir. A repoussoir is the fancy word for something that breaks the page angle. Trying to emphasize these eggs more. That's the sort of thing that usually I set aside until 
after there. I developed these thumbnails a little more. I think we should actually set a timer. Oh, look at that. Thank you, Internet. Two minutes, intervals. Uh, all right, let's keep these ideas flowing. You know, another thing that I think doesn't get enough praise is um, tutorial culture. So maybe this is something where uh, I'm going to start off with um, some sort of sense of horizon, but I want to sort of like draw a path that it's a little baby dragons running down. Uh, I tend to use like a shorthand for some of this stuff where I imagine this is a two point perspective problem and every once in a while it's aligned with that one. And every once in a while, it's aligned for that. So for various chunks of this path, we have stuff going like that. And, you know, I think i got to open this up more. There's your little baby dragon. <laughs> so these ceilings come up and somehow they would be up here. So now we can start seeing. Oh, that's it. God. What a horrible way to work. But you can sort of see the point. All right. Two in the zone. I'll spend a lot more time on this. And maybe some sort of obvious little hobbit door. I'm running out of ideas. What, what else do they do? Dragon school? You gotta start just telling yourself little stories about this stuff. Like, well, maybe they have like some sort of, actually, how about like a dragon pool? That's one of those. So, again, if that's there, maybe that's going like that. I actually did end up selecting a mid-level color for this. Just because I want to have, I don't know. I don't know. Well, this would be like Niagara Falls where it comes off in like a giant sheet of water. Oh, 
Oh, I sent my opacity to 50. So maybe this one is. Some sort of giant stalagmites coming down. Anyways, uh, I can clearly get a lot more ideas running pretty quick here. Oh, this one's cool. All right, shut up, timer. Wait, where'd that cool one go? There it is. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna start actually by switching to the marquee tool, and I'm just gonna darken this whole chunk. So that, when I switch to black, aka off on the mask, I can maybe just start off with that idea of like a light. Actually, gonna lighten this so I can try painting from light more. Especially down here in the corners, a lot of times you want to have like a view like this, and if you're in the wrong draw mode, you can't get there. So, like, uh, if that happens, you might just have to hit F a bunch. Post. Oh, here comes the beep. There it was. Sometimes uh, it's fun to just like start thinking through the perspective problem and just draw a bunch of lines going to some sort of principal vanishing point. And a lot of times it'll just emerge. So again, if that's the principal vanishing point. Hey, my light turned off. Cool dragon. Oh, I like this. See, now I'm starting to get some sense of like epic crystal formations in the background here. And it's mostly just because I was able to I was able to uh what was I saying? So just because I had that perspective grid and sort of meant that the rest of this started making sense. Uh, if you're still fiddling with your brush, it's almost always a sign that you're doing it wrong. Um, it's something where, like, you know, what you're really doing is experiencing the decay of time when you paint. We'll solve it later. Ugh.
I want to stop on this one. I really like it. And like even something like uh, the hole in the ceiling, just imagine that as some sort of rectangle. And then make it a more interesting rectangle. And then make it slightly more interesting. And then you've got a hole. I'm going to reduce my opacity temporarily just because I don't want it for one pass, something like that. So hopefully, like, uh, you can see sort of the goal that I'm actually doing very little with my layers. One layer, make it a mess. None of this is going to end up being my final line art. How many am I at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see if I can get to ten. I'm gonna turn off this B. So. I am, however, gonna start off with some light theory. Maybe I can do something where I reduce my opacity to fifty percent. Or 32%, which means that I can sort of build this stuff up over time. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm disobeying my own advice. I'm messing around with my colors and brushes, just like I said you shouldn't. Maybe something where the light, you know, that like beam of light impact is really like the core thing that I noticed in my reference that I want to replicate. So maybe I'll do something like that. So again, note up here, my opacity is set to 10. I'm actually pressing the hotkeys 1 through 0 on my keyboard while I have the brush tool, and that changes my opacity. Uh, I'm also on black right now which is reversing because I'm drawing on this. And by the way, if you don't want to do that crap, you can totally just have a single layer and you just make a mess on it. You don't need to mess with all these uh, uh, layer mask things. Really, the, the point at which you'll truly understand why you need layer masks is when it turns out you've been uh, drawing in light red instead of white the whole time and you don't know why your piece sucks like why you can't go through the layers. The way that you learn that this sort of early setup where you don't want to have tons of layers is nice is because you're working on a project and you start drowning in layers because uh, it's too much of a hassle. So keeping it simple is really handy. All right. Yeah, something like that. But it's kind of fun to paint immediately with mood. You guys probably shouldn't do that. And obviously, like this is starting to take too much time. So I'm going to switch back to white and zero. And single brush.
it's sort of a nah, you know, Lion King rock, Pride Rock. That's it. Well, that means that the horizon, if this is flat, that means the horizon's up here. So maybe I have something I. Just trying to think through my. So a lot of times I do that sort of. idea of like treating this like it's five polygons you know and then and I start figuring out where that would go And something with this sort of pyrite squariness would be cool. But I'm not going to do any. I'm just going to do just a line this time because I was getting way out of control the previous time. I should clarify some of the reasons that I draw the way I do. A lot of what I love doing is, you know, it's a rare treat for me to be a passenger in a car. And the road is such a good example of perspective. But, um, you know, I think there's like a shorthand that you can get if you like, if you try and eyeball perspective as often as possible, eventually you start being able to eyeball perspective. So uh, I'm going to talk throughout the class about like, how to set up a perspective grid, how to like trust your perspective, how to know if it's correct or incorrect. Um, but being able to get to the point where you can just know, it's very good. So like one aspect of it is just knowing that the horizon is where everything is going to collapse into nothing and anything further away from the horizon is going to have a lot more distortion to it. So as a for instance uh these columns are happening really recent raggedly or really aggressively into the foreground, you know? Like this is like, and then the further back you get, the more it tends to be opposite. One thing that you can do is, um, I love just doing flat lines to show horizontalness. And that's like a really handy visual cue if you're drawn on the treep and then even if there's like little variations in that maybe over here is like the dragon door And over here is some sort of little shrine. Uh, 
And this is really sort of our focus where it all kind of collapses back there. What about something with more treasure? Something where I have rolling hills of treasure. And again, I'm just using like Years of just trying to get it real fast. Uh, everything you're doing right now, if it feels like it's not helpful to you, uh, trust me, like you're building muscle memory for how to draw quick. And eventually you get to this point where you can start just pulling that out fast. And you don't need to perspective plot the roving hills of gold. This is way off in the distance, which means that these stalagmites would be very big. Uh, maybe some sort of statue shrine way off there. Maybe this is like a staircase coming down. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Man, I feel so dirty because I just used undo and I, for I forgot to mention how much I think you should not do that. Uh, here's why. Uh, again, I am trying to stay loose and every time I um, make something and I decide, you know, what, I don't like this chunk of this. If I hit E to start erasing this or control Z, control Z, control Z. First off, that's a waste of your time. And second off, um, Consider how much easier it is to just, in this mode, like, woo, I messed up. Just hit X and figure it out later by drawing into it. Also, just consider how, you know, you should learn this sort of uh, conti continuous contour line method, which I think is really uh, valuable in that... Uh, you know, if you get used to it, the continuousness of it ends up becoming something of the style, and uh, it's just so good for getting stuff done quickly um you know if you can learn to embrace the mess you're going to spend so much less time erasing something just to redraw it and erase it again there's a time for that maybe and it's called inking and you should not be doing it right now I'm trying to think of like what sort of stuff do you find in a dragon treasure hoard? Maybe there's
they're sledding. Dragon feet. What am I at? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's pretty good. I'm, I think I have enough here that I would have what I need to develop an idea. And I thought through a lot of the problems. Uh, I didn't have all these solutions when I walked in here. But I have a lot of ideas that I could jump into. And you can see that uh, I'm not requiring any sort of style. Uh, I'm just trying to work quickly. So I hope this gave you some stuff to think about in terms of getting a project up and running as quickly as possible.